Hello everyone. Welcome to the next lab of AC270 Embedded Logic Design. In the previous lab video, we discussed about the, our problem where we want to find the greatest common divisor of the two numbers. We also discussed one of the solution using the while loop. And we also discussed the, what are the challenges in the solution. So then another possible solution is to replace the while loop with the for loop. So for example, here uh, again, what has happened? You are implementing the circuit as a combinational circuit. Okay. And then uh, uh, you are, instead of while loop, you are using the for loop. Again, there are a couple of mistakes. Uh, this should be the uh, six down to zero. Okay. And uh, this should be, yeah, this is, has been corrected here, XS. It can be YS also, because we will stop when the XS is not equal to YS. Now, since in the while loop, what was the problem? We did not know how many iterations are there in the uh, while loop. So the tool says that it is not synthesizable. So what uh, the other uh, alternative option is that you use the for loop but you fix the number of iterations. So you can see that I am running the for loop for three iteration. This body of work remains the same. I compare the two numbers. I subtract the larger number from the smaller number and I replace the larger number with the difference. But here, what I'm saying that I'll stop it after the three iteration. Okay, uh, you can see that in this simulation, you can see that the code is working fine. You are getting the correct output. Uh, when you synthesize the um, hardware, and if you look at the hardware, you can see that for three iteration, uh, three sets of blocks are created one after the another. And each block corresponds to the one iteration. In every block, what you are going to do, you are comparing the numbers, doing the subtraction and all those things. You can see that that is what is happening in every block. Since there are three iteration, you have three copies of the hardware. So you are able to generate the bit stream, everything is working. And uh, uh, that's a good news. So why for loop is synthesizable? Because when we synthesize the for loop, the circuit within the for loop, that is the what are the all the operations are happening within the for loop are, are unwrapped, okay, to produce new instance of the circuit each time through the loop. So you are creating the uh, three blocks of hardware, one for every iteration of the for loop. If tomorrow, if you have for left with the 10 iteration, you will create a 10 blocks of hardware. And uh, this is uh, why it is happening because you are implementing the combinational circuit. That means your output depends upon input. Okay. So you, what you are doing, you are creating the blocks of three blocks of hardware for three iteration of the hardware uh, for loop. And this is iteration one, two, three, and then this you get the output and you get the input. Uh, you may say that, can I use this one, one block multiple times? So for example, uh, what I can take, I take the input and then I take the feedback and then I get the output and I use this for first, second and three iteration. But this is a sequential circuit because there is a feedback and you need to remember the values. So this is the sequential circuit and this is the combinational circuit. So for now, um, uh, we are still writing the code for the uh, GCD using the combinational circuit opera. So we have not discussed sequential circuit yet, but we will eventually go there. So this is the combinational circuit. It is synthesizable. That is, it is feasible on the hardware because the number of iterations in the for loop is fixed and known in advance. Okay, so everything is good. Everything is working fine. So, but the problem is that you must know in advance how many times program goes through the loops ahead of time. And this may limit the dynamic range of the input. For example, if I give the, till this point it is working fine, but if I give the value of 49 and 56, the output is 35, which is wrong. Why this is happening? Suppose I start with the X is equal to 49 and Y is equal to 56. After uh, the first iteration, I'll get the X is equal to, uh, X is equal to 49 and Y is equal to seven. Then at the second iteration, I get X is equal to 
uh, 42, y is equal to 7, and at the third iteration, I get x is equal to 35, and y is equal to 7. And because I have mentioned three iterations of the for loop, I stop here, and my output is 35, which is wrong. So since we are defining the input number of inputs, the number of iterations of the for loop in the beginning, uh, your code may not work for the certain range of the input and a uh, certain range of the output values, input values. So what is the solution? Again, this was one of the assignment in the uh, year 27 in the ELD, and uh, I asked them that you should come up with the uh, Verilog code. Which is synthesizable on hardware, but it also work for any range of input. Okay, and we will discuss what was the solution uh, uh, proposed by a couple of students, and what was the drawback, and how to overcome the, those drawbacks. Drawbacks in the next video lecture.